first thing that you probably noticed, the paintings are gone and the posters are up. The background's not as, you know, magnificent as like the paintings on the walls, but I've been wanting to take them down anyway. This wall will be filled with other things soon enough. So welcome to today's video. If you saw my last video, I said that this video wasn't going to be a video, but lo and behold, it is a video. What is this video about if you haven't read the title or, you know, seen the thumbnail? I wanted the first art of 2019 to be a self-portrait slash updated icon that I do pretty much like every year. I've only done it like twice though. <laughs> I wanted to make a brand new icon for me um, slash brand new avatar, you know, stuff like that because I just kind of wanted it to switch things up a little bit and I did that. I think that was like two weeks ago that I did that. The reason why this is now a video is because I decided to redo it. Um, and the reason why I decided to redo it is because when I finished it and posted it, I found out that I hated it. <laughs> like I genuinely do not like it. But it's still like, or at least until this video is up, it was still like my icon because I didn't want to like, I kind of didn't want to go back and you know, change it back to my old one. Um, and I also didn't delete that picture because I kind of wanted to take this opportunity to show you guys that it's okay to redo things, make mistakes, and then start all over again. So that's also what this video is about, not just about the drawing and coloring process of my self-portrait. It's okay to make mistakes and also redo things, much like I am redoing this face cam. I had recorded this intro and just the whole video before, but I had felt that it was a little bit too short. The first thing is that I didn't show you the sketching process. Um, if you saw my last video, the reason why this wasn't originally supposed to be a video is because um, my big head was in frame while I was recording. Um, but when you like watch the rest of the video, you will see that my head ends up getting into frame anyway. So that didn't really matter. <laughs> I'm trying my best, okay? <laughs> Whenever I draw anything, I have to really, really look at the paper, like have it be, be really close up to it, you know what I mean? And um, same as goes for inking and also coloring. Coloring, not so much. It's really just sketching and inking. My A lot of my head was in frame, actually. <laughs> so I decided to scrap it and what you're seeing now is the um, transferring process. I didn't want to like mess up the sketch, the original sketch, so I am transferring onto some Bristol paper, which is like a really, really thick paper that won't transfer onto another surface when you're using like markers or whatever. Um, it's just really, really good quality, thick ass paper. And the transfer paper I am using is the low transfer sheets um, that you can get at Dick Click, I think. I actually don't remember what the price was. I'll link everything that I use in the description box, so. I really, really like the low transfer papers. Um, I used to use Soral transfer paper. Um, that comes in a roll, but the low transfer paper, they come in like two sheets, which is kind of a bummer. You get less for um, the low transfer paper versus the Soral. <laughs> but I feel like the low transfer paper is a lot, lot better than the Soral transfer paper. Mainly because um, with the Soral transfer paper, I thought that I felt that I was pressing too hard just to get a little bit of the graphite onto the paper. But with the low transfer paper, I felt like I was putting less pressure. But you really have to be careful with transfer papers because I guess maybe I'm doing something wrong, but I guess like the graphite is hard to erase. Um, and the same went with the Soral transfer paper. The um, when you go a little bit too hard. First of all, the markings get a little bit darker and it's actually a little bit harder to erase, so. And then the next step is the lining process. Um, usually when I line artwork, I use a Pilot g -Tech pen in the size 0.3 or 0.25. My last favorites video, my 2017 favorites video, I said that the Pilot g -Tech pen was like one of the best like fine tip pens ever. You can also use it to write with, you can use it to line with, stuff like that. I thought to myself, you know what? It doesn't, it, there's no harm in trying new things out. I actually used dip pens like one time before. Um, 
actually a while ago. This was back when I was doing Inktober, when I had the time to do Inktober. Um, I used the dip pens like one time for one picture and then that was it. Um, the set that I was using was the Speedball Sketch set that you can get at Michaels or you can get at Amazon. Um, it comes with two nib holders, like the handles, and six nibs. So three for each of the holders. I used the smallest one, like the thinnest one, and that was really, really good for getting fine details. This set is really good for beginners, uh, which is obviously what I am. Uh, when it comes to dip pens and stuff like that. I recommend it even though I just said I was a beginner. I don't really have a place to recommend things right now. It is highly recommended anyway as a beginner and um, it's great to experiment with and it's great to um, get a feel for dip pens and I want to do a little bit more with them. The ink that I used was the Dr. P.H. Martin's um, India ink. From what I heard, India ink is the blackest, darkest ink that you can find. It's waterproof and it dries down matte, so I didn't really have to worry about smudging, but I will talk about that later on. It was really fun to line it, to be honest. Actually, it wasn't that fun. <laughs> it was a little bit hard because I said it was my first time in a while, but it was really interesting. I really, really want to try it a lot more. Um, whenever I see like inking videos done with dip pens or even fountain pens, it always looks so good and I always love like the scratching sound. It was really cool. I had to go painstakingly slow because um, I was a really, really new, new newbie when it came to dip fountain pens, like when I first tried it years ago. Um, I was doing it completely wrong. I was over dipping the pen and um, I was like doing fast motions, but you're not supposed to do that. I'm starting all over fresh. Everything is great. It was a little bit rocky in the beginning. Um, some are a little bit scratchy. I think I used too much ink the first time around, but you know, I got a feel of it. It was nice. It was really, really great. And then I had to wait for it to dry. Um, I waited a really, really long time for it to dry because I was so afraid of smudging the ink and ruining it all together. And I really, really did not want to do it all over again. So I waited like a day and a half uh, until I uh, went in to color the picture. To color this, I used the Winsor & Newton Pro Markers. These are really, really good markers, to be honest. I wouldn't say it's a good alternative to Copics, mainly because I haven't used Copics like ever. The only Copic marker that I've ever had was the blender and um, I never bought any more because I was a broke bitch. I still am a broke bitch. Um, these are not like cheap. They're pretty expensive. They're like $4 each, but some websites will give you like a discount. Some websites will charge $1.99 for some, some websites or for all, I mean, some websites, some websites, some websites will charge like $3.99. I'll link the um, website where I got this at. Before coloring, I had to do a swatch test and a coloring test and also a blending test because it has been a while since I've colored anything with markers. Everything has just been schoolwork and stuff and I haven't been able to do that much. And I feel like I've paid a lot more attention to um, digital work and using Photoshop a lot, which is good, but also I just, uh, I missed using my markers and I used doing traditional art, so. I had to do a swatch test and a color test to see what kind of colors, um, would go well with the portrait, which I didn't say in the beginning why I didn't like the portrait, um, is because the colors looked really sour and really nasty and I couldn't fix it. First of all, when I colored it, I accidentally flattened the image and I accidentally, well, I purposely flattened the image and merged the layers, but I accidentally saved it as that and I couldn't go back. <laughs> so I was stuck with it until I decided, you know what, this is good enough. But then the more that I look at it, the more I realize that this is not good. So. I had to redo it and I had to really, really be careful of how, you know, what colors really went together 
So the order that I went from was the shirt, the neck, and then the head. Um, mainly because I feel like I spend a lot of time coloring in heads. Like I spend most of my time coloring heads versus the whole body. Um, even in digital art, that's just how it is. I feel like I put more work into that area. I pay so much attention to the face. I feel like it's the hardest one for me or like the hardest part for me and I wanted to leave the hardest part out for a little bit. Uh, wanted to leave it last. I was so afraid of making a mistake. That was my biggest like downfall or like my biggest like fear going into this is because I didn't want to make a mistake because I desperately did not want to do it again. But I feel like um, everything went a little better. I was using a photo reference for this portrait and um, it's not exact. Um, I'm not like a realist. I'm not like, you know, I'm more of like a cartoony. My style is based pretty much off of like anime and uh, it grew into like a really cartoony-ish sort of style but you can tell that, you know, it's kind of based off of anime kind of but um, I'm not a realist I try to be as accurate as possible when it came to drawing but when it comes to coloring I know 100% that I'm not uh, you know that skilled I guess <laughs> even for the background for the original one I wanted it to be the exact image but I was you know biting off more than I could chew because I'm not used to stuff like that yet. So coming into this, I knew that I had to like do what I knew that I could do, but also, which that's kind of not the way that you should be doing it. You should be like challenging yourself. But for this one, I wanted it to do um, it in a way that I knew that I was good at. And uh, yeah. And uh, also, and this is just, mm, these are just my personal feelings. Um, if I start with realism, if I try to be a realist, I end up like, I would start my career all, all over again, I think, if that makes sense. But this is just my first piece of work that I've done on my own versus like school stuff. So, you know, g give me a break, okay? <laughs> Everything was going pretty well up until I got to the face, which is what I was afraid of. And uh, the marker that I used um, for the skin, uh, cinnamon, uh, actually it was dry. Um, when I did the neck, it wasn't that bad, but when I went to the face, it was terrible, and you can see that in the video. Um, I tried my best. I think it went pretty well. Um, I just need to buy another marker. But yeah, that was the only uh, part of the coloring process that was a little bit difficult for me to do. Um, dry markers, you know, I thought it was okay. I tested it out, but you know what? The more that I was coloring it, the more that it sucked. <laughs> I will mention that I did want to line the glasses, the sunglasses that I wear in the painting and also in the picture with like a silver ink. But um, I got the ink from the same brand, the Dr. PH Martens, but it's calligraphy ink and not acrylic ink. And those are like two different things. They should like work the same. I don't know, I had to return it in the end because, and this is why you do like a swatch test or like a coloring test because when I did the test for the ink, uh, it wasn't showing up on the paper. It really only shows up when it's a colored background. Um, it wasn't really showing up on the white paper, so. And um, I would have, it would have worked going over, you know, the skin and the sunglasses and stuff like that, but to be honest, uh, I wanted it to be sure that it would look good, so I just I decided to scrap that idea. And then I realized the sunglasses are actually gold, so you know, that's already messed up. But yeah, other than that, all in all, coloring was actually like a pretty good experience. I'm really, really excited and I'm really, really happy that I got to work with markers again. I think this year will be the year that I finally buy some Copics and I finally start building up my collection further so I probably won't buy the big 72 one because that costs like 300 bucks but uh yeah uh, maybe this year will be the year of Copics for me 
we'll see. The only part that I didn't do on camera was the background. I did not film the background at all because even now as I'm filming this, it's not finished. I didn't do the background yet because I genuinely don't know what to do with the background. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna end up going into Photoshop with it, which I, I won't film either. Uh, one of the big reasons why I didn't want to do the background on camera or just yet um, is because of the dried out marker that I use for this skin. I know for a fact that one of my markers is gonna dry out like as I'm doing the background and I wanted to prevent that as much as I possibly could. So yeah, I'm most likely gonna take it into Photoshop but you'll see by the end of this video. So this is the initial finished product, the first one that I made and then this is the final product that looks so much better than the original one. So yeah, that is it for this video. If you're wondering why I didn't delete that picture or didn't change my icon into something else when I realized that I didn't like it, it's because I wanted it to be an example of changing your mind and making mistakes and redoing things is a-okay. If you don't like, first of all, if you don't like something, don't post it. When I initially finished the first product, I knew that I didn't like it, but I posted it anyway. And it got pretty good feedback online and stuff like that, like on Instagram, but I didn't really like it. <laughs> and like, I actually don't like looking at my icon, like, at all, at least from when I'm making this video. I don't know, it just looks so bad, but <laughs> I posted it anyway. And I wanted it to be an example of how you, Jesus Christ. And I wanted it to be an example of making mistakes is completely normal and redoing things is a-okay, especially if you don't like the product and it bugs you every single day. <laughs> so yeah, that is it for this video and I hope you guys enjoy my first art video of 2019. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye! Do it as a fly, fly.